Hi folks, this is all the fruit, and here I have the service tree. Quite a small specimen. Service tree can become a really huge forest tree, and also a really huge orchard tree, which is very much valued for its timber. This one is quite small just because I didn't have the time to go and visit some of the bigger trees, which sometimes also have much more colorful fruit. Well, the new service tree has nothing in common with the uh, with serving or a servant or something like that. Also, it's not connected to the church service. Service tree comes from the Latin name Sorbos. It's in the genus Sorbos with other stuff like the checker and the rowan and some other plants which are also called service trees so or some scholars suggest to call this one the true or real service tree. Well, a pl plant, yeah, a tree that has been used by mankind for thousands of years. You can find it in the Talmud. You can find it in the works of the Greek philosophers. We don't even know where it's really native to. It might be native to Germany, but it has been planted here for thousands of years. And why do people plant it? And why don't we see this fruit a lot in the supermarkets nowadays? Well, people plant it for a lot of reasons. You can eat the fruit. You can eat it out of hand. The Greeks used to pickle it. Quite interesting. Uh, you can make jams and jellies and stuff. But its main use was for cider. Apple cider or also wine. In older times when there were no good ways to sterilize your equipment and to work under clean conditions, service tree well, service tree wine or cider was mixed with the apple cider, with the grape wine and with other wines to preserve them. It also gave them a better color and a better taste, but mostly it was to prevent them turning into vinegar within weeks. And that's the main reason it was planted in German orchards. I think the, the wood, yeah, back then the wood was very much valued. You would basically make the those big screws for the wine presses from service tree wood because it was the hardest wood you could get in this size. And, but only in recent decades it has been discovered as a forest timber tree. Very good timber, unlike some other sorbo species. It's funny, the genus sorbos, there are some really good timber species like the service tree and the checker and there are species with very low quality wood like the rowan which looks almost exactly like a service tree with smaller fruit. Well, what do you do with the fruit? By the way, the German name for this plant is Speierling, which has nothing to do with the German word for the bird of prey, but has something to do with spitting. Basically the spitter. Well, a fruit that's called spitter, it's a little bit, it's a little bit suspicious, but okay. Let's try it. Uh. That's what the fruits look like. They basically look like a small apple or a small pear. This is something in between. More apple-like, but a little bit pear-like. And they can be very colorful. Here there is a hint of orange, but they can be much, much more colorful. Mm. This one is almost good to eat. It's already soft and has some sweetness, but it's still really astringent. Like you can taste what it will be in a week or so. There is already the nice pear flavor. There is already some sweetness and softness, but the astringency is dominating it. Because there is a trick when eating this plant. Its other German name is Drecksack, which literally translates as sack of dirt or dirt sack. Basically a dirt bag. And yeah, that's what they look like when they are good to eat. Look at this. Would you eat this fruit which looks rotten? This one looks still not rotten, but like it wants to start rotting. Let's find another one. This might, might actually be 
a little bit too far gone, but here there are three different fruit in different stages of, well, rotting. Let's first try the one where the rot has just begun. And it's not a rot, by the way. Mm. Nice. The flavor is not so pear-like anymore. Still reminds me of a pear, but it's a typical service tree flavor. Also, it's sweet. There is still a trace of astringency, but I don't know how much of it is from this fruit because my mouth is still burning from the last fruit. But I guess there might be a little bit of astringency here. Let's try this one. Seems to be in the perfect state. It's already quite brown. Oh yeah, no astringency. Not so much flavor in this one. It could have been fallen, could have fallen off the tree where it was still underripe. Not much sweetness, especially. This one could still be good. Could already be too far gone. No, it's still good. Sweet and flavorful. Well, why is this fruit a spitter when it's still? looking fresh and why do you have to wait for it to become a dirt pack until you eat it well there is a thing called apoptosis which means the cells once the fruit is ripe they basically burst open the juices gush out some chemical processes happen while the, where the <coughs> astringent acids and tannins and whatever are transformed into sugars and suddenly the fruit is edible <clears throat> there are a couple other fruits which do this, but the service tree is one of the more famous ones. There are pear varieties, and also the medlar and the checker do this. <clears throat> the thing is, once you have, once your cells have exploded, and you've become ripe for the taking, basically you are not a, well, the fruit is not really a functioning organism anymore. It's basically a dead organism, just being prevented from rotting by the skin <clears throat> yeah, and of course the skin can be penetrated by bacteria and fungi and insects and other stuff and then the fruit will really start rotting so you have to be really careful folks you have to choose the fruit which look rotten but which are not rotten yet which are dead but not rotten <clears throat> because they have not been killed by bacteria or mold but by their own processes <clears throat> So yeah, let's see if I can find one more. God, my mouth is still astringent from the first fruit. It's still <coughs> burning from the first fruit. And even the second had a bit of astringency because I didn't taste anything in the last two fruit. And so when you look at fruit on the ground, basically this one is not ready. This one is not ready. This one is already too dry. This one is not ready. Well, this one would have been ready, but I stepped on it. Now it looks like a bit of dog poo. This one is already rotten, this one is dry, 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 dry. This one is eaten by birds, dry. I guess this one will be the only one I would eat. And it was on the ground, so it's not particularly clean. You can do also something else. You can basically pick the fruit, either single fruit or a whole bunch. You can store them somewhere. However, if you store them at home, they will dry up quite fast because they're quite small fruit and in autumn basically it ripens in September, October in autumn houses tend to be quite dry mm. so basically yeah I would say the best way to store it uh, is the best way to use it is to pick it in that state here when it's almost ripe then store it in crates in your basement or somewhere in the shade around your house and check every day and take the fruits which are ripe there are a couple good ones up there but I'm too small to get them well there is no stick anywhere well here there is a stick let's try and 
Let's try and get one off the tree because sometimes they are already good when still on the tree. Look at this one. I think this one is perfect. Oh yeah. Sweet, flavorful and quite clean because it spent just a couple of seconds on the ground. Yeah, good fruit. Once the spitters pick up dirt bags, they are quite tasty. In the state where they are already brown, but not yet dark brown is the best. Well folks, this was the service tree, or the sorbus tree, sorbus domestica. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful city of Heidelberg, and don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe.